Hello, Recording7, and welcome back to Combat Mission Battle for Normandy. We are continuing the Scottish Quarter campaign, and we're coming back with a brand new mission. So we're into mission number 12, uh, and this one's called the Grandville Chateau, I believe. Uh, and we're into a, a much smaller scale this time, um, essentially we just have an infantry assault on a German position. So uh, the last mission we fought, defending uh, Grandville against the German counterattack, um, and we are just off the corner of Granby itself. So you can see these uh, buildings here are, are where we are kind of with, with a central part of our defence. Um, and then we had our, our secondary platoon, or one of our side platoons, got occupying these buildings and they didn't see any action in the previous uh, mission. So you can see this is a, a kind of a slice of that which has been slightly expend, extended uh, over in this direction. I suppose that might have been on the, on the map last time, I'm not sure. I think the cutoff might have been here, I can't quite remember. Anyway. We're very close to where we were before, and the objective here is to um, essentially root out a German infantry platoon. So, forces at our disposal, we have the 13th, 14th and 15th uh, platoon of C Company. They have obviously been slightly battered from previous excursions, um, and I think this <laughs> this mission may be where I pay somewhat for... Um, not protecting my infantry better in the previous scenario. Uh, so looking at the these three uh, platoons, so we've got 14 platoon, which is essentially entirely destroyed. I've got uh, part of a section with three riflemen uh, and a two inch mortar. Then we have 15 platoon, which are filled strength. So th this platoon uh, was the one sitting off at the side, didn't really get involved in combat, so they are, uh, f yeah, full strength. And since you haven't fired a round, I uh, know we, we fired a few shots, but. Uh, more or less, uh, haven't seen combat. And then we've got 13th platoon who are sitting at about uh, maybe 40% strength. So we've got um, um, kind of f four men out of a 10 section for one. We've got what's that, five for section two and only two for section three. Unfortunately, we've only got two brain guns between them. So we are down a brain gun as well. So all in all, on an infantry basis, we've, we're probably about 50% of where we, where we could be um, if we're coming in full strength with this. Um, other assets we have is on the field is these supporting brain carriers. So we've got two uh, brain carriers with a uh, scout team and, and their HQ unit. And um, we've also got a brain carrier with our uh, company HQ unit as well. So I think we're going to have to utilize all these carriers in this mission to get the job done. Um, anything else? Oh, we've also got a sniper here uh, who comes with uh, C Company. And we do have some off-field support as well in the shape of 81mm mortars. So we've got one battery there with uh, scarce ammunition. In fact, if I select an HQ unit, you can see. So they've only got 40 rounds each. Um, so it's probably good for two, two short or one sustained barrage, really. That's about all we're going to get out of that. And I do also have access to, or rather the mission allows access to, uh, a fighter bomber, it's Typhoon. Which I was quite excited to use because, despite my, I don't know what it is, 150 odd hours in in uh, Battle for Normandy, I've not actually used any air assets yet. Um, unfortunately, I may not get the opportunity here. So um, I was looking up the, the the manual because I couldn't find anyone who had the ability to actually call in these assets. And it turns out, uh, so in Battle for Normandy, only FOs um, can actually call in air assets. So I suspect I'm supposed to have an FO who died in the last mission, and therefore I do not have him. Um, which means I'm not going to be able to call in my air assets. So this is just a, a scout, he's, I know it's a very similar symbol, but he's got no, no radio or anything. And even my company HQ man, who does indeed have radio, not permit to call in the fire bomber. So we may have lost um, a fairly powerful asset. Um, information on the Germans that we're facing, like say, it's... it's up to one platoon strength of infantry. Uh, we're told they're well trained and they're highly motivated, so we're not likely to break and run, which is going to make this a bit of a, of a brutal grind, most probably. Um, there's no indication of any supporting uh, armor or vehicles, um, and hopefully they don't have that much way in supporting uh, kind of off map artillery or any assets like that. But even so, one platoon of Germans has more than enough MG42s to cause me many problems. At the same time, we have been warned there is snipers to the west of our village here. Um, so kind of over in this direction. So I would suspect um, potentially set up in this farmhouse here or in this um, chateau in the middle of the map. 
probably likely positions for, for snipers. So we do have to be cautious about that. Uh, in terms of the map itself, so I see fairly flat, fairly open, um, you know, kind of dominated uh, really by the, the Haddo Chateau objective and the kind of heavy bocage around that, with obviously a few buildings in the middle which make some points of interest. If we have a quick look at the chateau over here, um, I kind of think there's there's probably two steps we're going to have to do here. Uh, one is kind of safely getting our troops to this bocage line, and then we're going to have to um, come up with a plan of how to clear the internal area of the chateau, because I see um, quite a lot of walled off areas that are going to restrict line of sight, as well as allow the Germans just to hide in these buildings and um, cause us some pretty significant problems as we round corners. I suspect uh, I'll ultimately use my mortar barrage probably to uh, drop a large number of rounds in and amongst these buildings. Again, not it's not, obviously not the most effective use of mortars to hit troops in a building, but um, nearby shells can certainly cause um, injuries to troops in buildings. And I, cause I think that's also where we're going to have the most problems, but we shall see. I also think I'm going to have to use fairly liberally, liberal use of these brain carriers as essentially roving machine gun emplacements um, to root out the Germans as well. So in terms of the overall approach, um, so there's, there's probably kind of three avenues of attack really, which I've, I've thought about in terms of how we approach the chateau. Uh, the first would be to kind of uh, go into the far right of this map. Um, you'd have to you would have to secure the central objective and clear out any kind of snipers from here and then approach the, sh approach the chateau over a large open area towards this bocage. That, that, that's my kind of least favourite of all the options. Um, firstly is of course you know, you've got to find and root out the snipers and deal with them um, and then you know, there's definitely going to be Germans in among this bocage and having to kind of cross the field in front of that. It's a large open area. I'm not, I'm not convinced that's the road to victory. A uh, second route you could go is is essentially just kind of straight up the middle, um, concentrate the forces, take out this chateau, and then head along through the fields um, or along the road, and enter the the kind of objective complex from this corner. And that's not a terrible idea. Um, I think certainly if we can, you know, secure control of this chateau, it allows you to have. Um, I suppose kind of area control over a large element of the map. Obviously, you need to make sure you've got enough firepower to back that up. Uh, but it would, be, you know, a good place to put scouts, a good place to put a sniper, um, just kind of give you a bit of vision. Debatable exactly how much we'll see. Um, obviously, with this heavy bocage, you could be limited to just spotting guys along the hedge line. Uh, but certainly, it wouldn't be a bad position to hold. The downside of this route is if there is um, kind of snipers hiding over here and we don't clear them out then they're going to be a bit of a, a thorn in our side and essentially kind of shooting into our backs. Uh, the other downside is once we take this position and we, as we're trying to close in we're very likely to have Germans um, along this bocage line kind of firing into our flank so definitely some downsides. The third option um, is essentially to swing out wide to the left uh, so you can kind of come along this back edge of the map um, obviously through these little buildings and then potentially push through this wheat field uh, which should provide a little bit of cover but it's obviously a small hedge road as well will just break a little bit of line of sight um, and then allow you to get the hope of cash. I suspect there's Germans behind here as well um, so it's certainly by no means a, a, a straightforward victory. So what's the plan with those kind of rough three options? Well I think at this minute I'm leaning uh, most heavily towards heading out to this left so taking uh, using my 15th platoon as essentially my main fighting force um, and I'll kind of, I'm going to use to, to kind of crack the chateau uh, have them approach across the field supported probably by some brain carriers to suppress any infantry positions that we do see along this hedgerow. At the same time I'm going to use um, what's left of 13th platoon or primarily the um, one section of 13 platoon to, to set up a fire base somewhere. Um, potentially, you could set up in probably initially, probably move them initially to this building ahead of the main um, platoon uh, section, I should say. No, platoon, that's right. And then uh, you could also set them up. I mean, I'm, I'm, you could go behind this hedge. I don't want to do this all firing through my own men. So I'll have to look at that. But yeah, use them as a, as a bit of a fire base as the rest of the platoon try and get across. Um, of course, any I would also like to use my, my brain carriers and push them forward 
probably in advance of most inventory again to, to help identify and pin down any German positions. What we have left in terms of the 14th here are essentially just going to act as additional scouts. There, there's not much of a fighting force left to them. I will commandeer their 2 inch mortar uh, and probably just, you know, effectively attach that to 15 platoon as, as part of their efforts. Um, and I'm tempted actually to take these kind of handful of guys um, and to do some scouting out towards this main shuttle and to see what we can see. I, I've got a strong, a strong suspicion there's going to be some Germans in here. But I'm tempted to push these guys, see if we can get some identification, and then maybe actually swing our um, potentially swing our brain carriers over here and and try and clear this place out um, whilst we're still advancing. You know, walking our troops along here, to get ready to push over, use their mobility to kind of hit a couple one place and then come back and support. Uh, that's the general plan. So far, all I've done is go around and shit out some spare ammunition we had on the go. Although most people were in a reasonable condition from uh, from that perspective. So that's the plan. Um, first thing I'll do, obviously, is, is just going to send out a little network of scouts. Um, uh, so what I'll do, I've not done any initial orders, is I'll probably put a quick cut in here. I'll go do everybody's orders, uh, and I'll come back and uh, just gonna talk through that, and then we'll kick things off. Okay, initial orders set up. Um, so yeah, just on a fairly standard thing, I've got some of my uh, smaller teams. I I've, I've done that wrong. You're not supposed to have a target arc. You are. Um, so the guys are going out scouting, the usual kind of 100 meter engagement range on them, so don't give themselves away too much, although this is actually quite a large, well, that's half a section, it's not really a scout team, but they're just kind of uh, clearing the way up to this building. Um, one thing I did do is I took my CO out, uh, where is he, and plonked him in a building over here, um, and then put what is left of three section with their, what was just two rifles, and put him into brain cars, so uh, I can make more use of it without... Uh, endangering my CO. On this flank um, we have grabbed our three riflemen, they're going to start kind of scouting out towards the farm. Again, I, I think what I really want to do is just make sure, and I think there will be, but anyway, make sure there's no Germans in here, or eliminate the Germans out in here, so that when I am pushing across this field, um, you know, they don't have, as you can see there is a bit of a line of sight from these buildings, you know, potentially hit my flank with a, with a MG or whatever, so we are going to have to clear out this building. Um, I'm hopeful I've got enough kind of forces. I don't really have that many at all, but I can clear out without calling in my main troops, which are currently just kind of sitting back here. I did grab the other P from um, what's that, 14th, 13th. Um, I'm just going to kind of essentially move them around, so there'll be uh, one infantry platoon supported by two P sections and two mortar sections. So. Uh, a little bit stronger, though I'm not expecting to face vehicles, so uh, maybe not the most useful guys to have around, but there we go. Right, without further ado, what I'll do is I will kick things off um, and do my usual for I will just do all the scouting if we have, when we get first contact. So bring you guys back and let you know about that then. So I will see you in a jiffy. And things have kicked off with a little bit of a bang. Um, and so we have had a few confirmed of German forces being in this building. Thankfully, their uh, sniper doesn't seem to be up to too much, and our scouting troops here escaped his first uh, first advances. In addition, um, we've had a very interesting spot in the back of this uh, this part of the map. Let me see if I zoom in. So there's a, a half track here with a heavy machine gun sat on top. So I don't really want to go anywhere near that, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, that would take a, a reasonable amount of time and effort to try and engage and take out, especially as it's, you know, fairly well protected front on. I'd have to try and get around and flank it and then uh, use kind of some of my PA teams or close in infantry with grenades. Either way, the prospect of trying to take out that position is uh, distinctly unappealing. So I think my priority will probably be to uh, avoid its fields of fire. I am going to have to do something about this sniper, I don't want to give him free reign over our troops as we move around this field, um, but I want to try and do so in such a way I think that minimises my exposure to that position there. But it is concerning the fact that they may have other half-tracks in and around which is going to cause us a fair amount of problems, um, especially as we do not have our uh, fighter-bomber support with which to deal with, with kind of vehicles, so we're left to, uh, to just our two pit sections. Uh, Grant, so I think the plan will be I'm probably going to try and swing well two things, we've got our own snipers in here who should be just about getting to position oh 
and indeed looks like he's lining up for a shot. So we've got a little bit of a sniper battle. Uh, the other thing I'll probably look to do is get one of our um, half tracks, half tracks brain carriers, um, and move them round potentially. Uh, potentially kind of over to this road position, maybe a bit further over. Somewhere, maybe somewhere in about here perhaps, where we've got a bit of line of fire onto this house, could put down some suppressive fire, um, but are uh, somewhat hidden from that half track. So that's going to be the general plan. So I'll pull one of my brain carriers in that general direction. I'm not going to fully commit them just yet. But I might start just with this chap uh, to head along this road a little bit. So let's do that. Just come into here. I'm conscious we haven't fully scouted out along this way to see what else is hiding for us among the bushes. Uh, but that's where we go. Maybe we'll uh, we'll hit the button. I'll keep you around just to see if our sniper here can get shot away. And we give him uh, give him a, a, a benefit of a doubt and a little bit of action. So here we go. Hang on. What can you see, my friend? I mean, to fear his uh, his view is not the greatest, is it? it would perhaps have been better back in one of his other houses. Oh, that's not particularly good either. We shall see if he can make the shot of streams, though. No, no, he cannot. Did he get anywhere close? Let's have a look. Let's see. I imagine he probably just hit a tree. It's hard to. Uh, here, we'll do this. We'll stick ourselves out the window. Mm. Uh, let's go. Ah, maybe not a million miles away. But we'll see. Um, okay, so what I'll do is I'll put uh, another cut in again. We're just going to. I'll need to be a bit more careful with these guys, but get them into cover into this hedgerow. Um, and we'll kind of reposition our troops and then we'll come back when we're probably in a little bit more of an advanced position. And we're ready to perhaps try and turn the screw on the sniper and then I'll see if we'll get any other interesting spots to boot. So I will see you then. Okay, we're a few minutes, well, about one and a half minutes later on. Uh, two, two, two things really to report. Um, one is interesting, you'll see there I've got a hit, hit and hull and penetration on my ammo truck. All bizarre things, and it took me quite a while to work out what was going on here actually. Um, so, as I play, you might see a few more shots come in, and it's over from this direction. But I, I checked, and it's not this half track firing. And you see, we do now get a kind of grey contact symbol there, so it would be some more uh, appear to be some more German forces, should potentially be another half track, could be some intersections tuckling further along. Oh, actually, we got the spot. I guess I never quite uh, played on this far. So, you go, we've got some more Germans dug in including a nice man with an MG, uh, who managed to spot my truck all the way back here. So one thing I will have to do is just make sure we're not inadvertently showing our sights to him, which we seem to be okay there. I will have to watch out for that brain carrier. The other thing was my sniper uh, wasn't taking pot shots at the, sni uh, the other sniper, as we saw the trees were pretty far away, and he's actually been taking pot shots at this half-track. Um, so far, obviously, he's done a whole, there's one of his bullets there, done not much apart from ping one off the hull and ping one off the turret. Um, I mean that's a pretty small target he's aiming for so I might redirect him because I'm not sure that's the best use of his efforts though. It would have been nice had he managed to get a headshot on the gunner and essentially render that thing useless. Uh, but we'll have to make sure he doesn't draw too much attention to himself. We could um, potentially reassign him somewhere more like, uh, oh, actually that's pretty useless as well. Somewhere he might actually get a line of sight onto this enemy sniper in a building, which would be a better use of his talent. But that's about it. Meanwhile, we're we'll continuing our kind of slow, steady, steady move out along the sides of the map, and we'll continue to swing our forces out that way while we kind of continue to fill in information on the troops that are here. But again, there seems to be a reasonable force tucked in here, and, and as my objective's over this way, I just kind of want to kind of ignore them, really, kind of flank around, do my best to avoid them and not expend. Um, kind of effort and material in terms of engaging them. So uh, we will continue to push on uh, and I will bring you guys back if and when something more interesting happens. Okay, so enough, another couple of minutes on and, and things are generally as they were. We're continuing to develop and kind of start feeding our forces around and we're just kind of slowly kind of starting to build up on this ha left hand flank. We have suffered our first casualty which is from our scouting um, team over there. The sniper finally found his range and, and unfortunately took one of the guys down behind the hedge. Uh, we are relocating our sniper um, into this building where there is line of sight out of one of the windows to this house. If I can kind of we pop inside. It's I think it's this leftmost one. Yeah, it has a straight line of sight into where the sniper is. Uh, with these things, it's a bit of a. It's, 
I feel like it's a bit of luck depending on which window you guys decide to, to stand at, but I've given them a face command which should hopefully encourage them to stand in the right place. And then again, we just have to hope the marksman is also in the right place. Uh, we have also unfortunately had our first casualty due to essentially an error. I had a section in the bottom of this building um, and I had asked them just to move uh, into this hedgerow, just a part of my kind of shuffling troops around. Uh, I didn't set any waypoints for them and kind of, I suppose in my mind, had expected them to come out the back here and go in through this gap. And unfortunately, uh, they decided a lot of them to come out the front and then walk down this way. Um, and in doing so, attract the attention of the German infantry over here. Uh, with some unfortunate consequences. So we did lose a uh, pixel group in there entirely unnecessarily. Um, yeah, if I'd set a waypoint that would have happened and it was just one of those things where my assumption of how these guys would move is very different from how the uh, the kind of um, pathfinding AI worked it. So a bit frustrating but we will move on and uh, persevere. But that, that's about all. Uh, I just wanted to, to fess up to my casualties thus far. Again, we're, we're continuing a little bit of suppression work with our uh, brain carrier, but I really do want to take that sniper out um, just because otherwise he's going to be a constant thorn on our side. I think th these guys, and, and the more strength I see of you, I'm more convinced in my uh, decision not to go anywhere near this part of the map. Uh, I think you know by the time we swing over the far left, they're going to be non-entities, but I still think the sniper is going to be within range and cause us problems, so it's something we're going to have to deal with. So I would like to try and take him out. Um, yeah, so as ever, that was the update. I'll uh, push forward and uh, hopefully for the next few minutes we may start getting into a bit more of, of content action and we'll, we'll do our usual kind of blow by blow, but uh, it's probably going to be a little bit more downtime, so again, I'll stick another quick cut in. Alright, we are back. We're on the 33 minute mark. I'm just, uh, I have watched the first 20 seconds or so of this, um, but I do want to bring you back. Uh, this so far has been uh, just, again, just general maneuvering on my part. A few kind of pop shots swat swapped between the, the sides, mainly to ill effect. Entries enough are uh, Bedford here. It seemed to be attracting all sorts of attention and was briefly targeted by a machine gun over here. Again, didn't really do too much damage for it. However, uh, credit has to go to the Germans there. Uh, sniper chalked up one more kill on, I think it was this section. Took out, um, you see we red cross there, the guy behind, behind the hedge. I had to switch around the suppression, so I was trying to suppress him originally with this brain carrier, but um, I noticed that actually that so it has maybe a slight problem with the, with the angle, um, and in fact most of its bullets seem to be catching on this hedge here, so it wasn't doing a whole deal of suppression. So I switched over, I brought a second brain carrier just inside the field here. Uh, he's going to come forward to this position and then put some suppressive fire in on that sniper. Um, as I said before, I had to relocate the sniper, I just play while we're waiting, and he f had a lot of trouble spotting the sniper. In fact, I think this is the first minute he actually identifies him and manages to get his shot away. Um, yeah, like so. And our brain carrier actually starts to put some suppressive fire in. Unfortunately, our sniper seems to be missing, despite the fact, actually, it's, it's you'd think it's an almost perfect, um, a perfect shot. You can see he's lined up, if you can see it. Just looking at the... Oh, okay, I take it back. It's maybe not quite a perfect shot from there. Because actually, I was looking at it from this way. Look at that. Framed. Framed. How could you not hit that guy? Um, so I will... I will rein in my criticism. Uh, but yeah, but so this is our obviously our priority to take out the sniper, but I'm pretty this, this brain should at least suppress him if nothing else. And and he says Haha <laughs> and did more than that. Excellent, excellent. One dead German sniper. Fantastic. So kudos to that brain carrier. He did a job and a half. Now I'm gonna have to try and send some troops in here most likely going to be uh, first section here just to confirm it's clear um, and just kind of hold it as a, a bit of a linchpin kind of keep eyes for any any kind of movements of the Germans. I might, I'm tempted uh, thinking out loud here I may even leave one of my peats hidden in amongst these hedgerows just in case they get crazy with his half track and start trundling it around the place I don't know about that, I'll have to think about that off camera but that's a huge win, because he, he's been a big thorn on our side. We've not spotted really anything else over on this side uh, that's really been kind of causing us problems. I, I mean, I kind of think they've got to have some guys on the Tedro, which we'll find out eventually, but that's um, that's a really good start. We've had the odd flurry of machine gun fire from these guys, but nothing much. And as long as they stay stationary, I'll be pretty happy with that. Oh, I'll need to tell him to cancel the order. Slight panic as to what he was firing at, but yeah, he just had a, a target order. 
You didn't though. Why are you shooting at? You should acknowledge that that sniper is no longer there and you don't need to fire. Meanwhile, as you can see, I'm just pushing uh, troops in and along the corridor with some advanced elements doing some scouting for me. So let's go done. So maybe we'll do the next minute live just to see if anything interesting happens. Uh, but what perhaps what I'll do is I'll put the briefest of cuts in here just to check my moving orders. I will have to decide what I want to do with our sniper now. Um, potentially I could put him back in this house and just let him take pot shots of this. It's a pretty low likelihood of ever doing anything. But at the same time, it might be better than nothing. The danger is, of course, you put him somewhere and he starts attracting an NMG um, fire uh, and then just kind of gets injured, which I don't really want. All right, I'm going to think about that. I'm going to put movement orders in, but I will come back and we'll, we'll roll through the next minute together and we'll kind of chat about where we are. All right, all moving orders away. So I'm probably not expecting too much action this minute. Um, he says as my brain team keeps firing. And they finished good. Um, I am. I'm going to try and push this the, this scout team just into this corner of the field here. It's crossing the roads, probably going to be quite dangerous. Um, who is firing? And is it at us? I suspect it is, but I can't tell exactly where. Oh, hello. The sniper may not have been alone. Let us. Uh, so yeah, as I said, this is likely to be a bit on the dangerous side, and indeed it was our team here attracting attention, I believe. From said house. Okay, good to know. So there is um someone in there, probably. Ah, I don't. Know, probably anything. Probably some kind of infantry team section, I would think. Um. Obviously, given that they're shooting at these windows, because they're, all, I would say, on the ground floor, looks like probably in this first house. Ah, and they proved me completely wrong by popping up in this window. Oh, he's doing, he's doing buddy aid. Ah, okay. That fire definitely looked like it came from downstairs. So it could be um, split between these two floors. But it's something we have to pay attention on. Our snipers are moving into uh, this house, which is probably going to be a poor shout actually. Oh, I regret moving them. It's too ahead of myself. I might have to push them back. Uh, but we should have at least some brain carriers in position. We do. Ah, uh, we do see. It's okay. We should be able to get some return fire on. Will you engage on your own back? Actually, it's there. our own troops back here are doing the best of it. Oh, is it you? Every time I turn around, I can't see the, uh, the firing. Oh, there we go. Okay, he has opened up here. Just couldn't see the tracers. Alright, so there's more infantry in here we're going to have to uh, be aware of and take out. That's okay, we can manage that. That's not a problem at all. You see, I'll probably move my sniper back in because uh, he has terrible field of vision into that building from this position. Yeah, it's not what you want. It's not what we want. Alright, let's do that now. So, uh, do you know what? That's turned into a very, very garbled minute. I was not expecting to see so much, um, so many things to make me think, so I apologise for that. Yeah, cool. You're tied in that farm. That's good. You boys just stay where you are for just now. Um, do I want to just target the top window? Tempting. Why not? Spend a minute shooting into there. See what we get out of it. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, which never went into it, so I have broken off one section here. They're going to try and help scout it towards this farmhouse. Um, again, just for some eyes and ears and making sure we know what's going on there. The danger, of course, is as we push across uh, this side, if they've got some machine guns, especially on the second floor, they're going to have line of sight into our flank. But I've said all this stuff already. Right, you guys are just about ready to push across the field. That's my advanced scouting element. The actual attack forces are milling in behind, which is good. So let us do that. And no, let us wait until you guys get here, actually. So let's 
give you a job order all the way and you can act at least as a bit of firebase support for my scouts should things go right and we should identify some uh, areas you can actually return fire excellent I'm going to get you to target in there because I'd quite like to see what your um, just make sure you get the angle on that okay Now I'm doing all my movement, movement things on camera. My plans have fallen apart, right? I need to head in this direction. Good. Alright, let's do one more minute and then I'll maybe stop to uh, collect myself. I'm aware of the time, so it's obviously about a quarter of our time has gone already. And we've just done the kind of standard repositioning rather than any kind of pushing forward. But that's okay, I think kind of obviously foxholes, half tracks, over that way, danger lies. I would like to get some actual eyes on what's in here. Which you may be able to get with our sniper team, but it, trees tend to get in the way a little bit. Meanwhile, moving out is going okay. A quieter minute. So, we're attracting attention from the Germans at the back there. Who is attracting said attention? You guys are okay. Right, I'll need to watch that. I thought they'd be covered more in the trees, but that doesn't seem to be quite be the case. They do have a little distance on their side, but that's about it. Alright, cage is there thus far. Uh, Alright, I'm going to go redo check all my movement orders. We'll come back. What are we sitting at? Uh, just under 30 minutes. We'll maybe come back into a couple more minutes. This video is mainly going to be about that first kind of positioning phase, um, but yeah, we'll do a, a few more before we call that a day. Okay, and as we're pushing forward here, again, we've just got some suppress fire on this building, but I don't imagine they're going to stay upstairs for too long. We'll see some further information on the chaps in the foxholes. We can go take a look. Come on. Just the same chap with the machine gun. Fair enough. Uh, and again, these guys are causing problems. I'm just trying to get them across into the uh, field as quickly as I can to get them out of trouble. And it looks like, just with distance on our side, we've managed to... Oh, I did just see, perhaps, our first signs of resistance over here, which is of a bit more interest to me. Oh, is it? Hang on, let's have a look at that again. Hmm. Not sure if that's just a a rifle crack from infantry over there or if something else. Oh, it's machine gun fire from infantry over there. That's disappointing. I didn't think they would have a vision of my infantry as they pushed out. Because that poses a problem for our entire strategy, really, of pushing up this flank. We, we might be able to get for it if we really stick to the hard flank. But that could be uh, could be problematic. Perhaps what I want to do is set up some smoke rounds for when I'm pushing across with the main force, just to make sure they, they stay out of action. All the better is I could always uh, set up my sniper to try and take care of them. Which is a pretty bold move, because generally you get one shot against an MG and then they uh, cause you lots of problems. Alright. The other thing I was thinking about, and I don't know if I've talked about it on camera, is you could always, I could bring my sniper down into this position, in amongst this hedgerow, where he's got a pretty good line of sight into these buildings. Potentially could see and pick off some people, but again, you take a shot, if you miss, um, you tend to then get uh, MG in response, which is often bad for your sniper's health. But it's about the only place we've got actual line of sight into the base of those buildings that isn't obscured by trees. And potentially we could try the lower grounds of this floor. They might be able to see something. That might be worth a shot. That might be worth a shot. 
Um, or, I mean, like I said, we could take some pot shots at these guys. 270 meters. He's at least he's slightly easier to hit than the uh, half track. Why not? Let's do it. If we can take him out, it'll be a win. Although, the Germans will also use Buddy Aid to probably um, pick him up again. Right. These two chaps have made it into the field. I would like, I'm going to get them to crawl forward, actually. Uh, and don't don't go hard up against the the hedgerow. Just come into maybe a bit there. I'm even going to put an explicit hide command on, and I'm going to tighten your armor, your target arcs. I do not want you to engage. Try something like that. Because again, you'll pick a fight. Uh, you won't be able to win. Good. Meanwhile, everyone else is moving along and we've got our first scout out. I'm disappointed that they, their machine gunners can actually see us that far over. Um, I'm, I'm somewhat surprised at that. Okay. Let us... Obviously let's continue, but I also want to... You guys... And I'll need to be very careful how we advance here, but start heading up behind this carrier. And maybe see if we can't get towards this building. Good. So far, casualties remain low. Forward progress is slim, but I'm quite happy with having most of our fighting force around in this left flank. I think it's going to do a lot of good. Let's maybe see. Are you uh, pitching up to take a shot? You are. I mean, it's a fair distance. We believe in you, my friend. Who are you? Well, I don't have your name. What do we think? It's probably going to be a miss, isn't it? Yep. Got his attention, though. I see, we might get one or two away before he realises someone's shooting at him. And then return fire. And he's a lot more bullets than I do. Like so. Yeah. Ah, I think this is going to be a pullback from the snipers. I don't much uh, fancy their odds in a prolonged firefight. Even with building protection. Well, we saw what happened with our uh, sniper over here and the brain gun. Again, machine gun over there just seems to be taking some pot shots from my vehicles. But. Nothing of too important. Okay, right. So that is going to bring us to the end of this episode. So again, a very a cagey first start. Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy, I think, with the approach of sending the troops around there. We are going to have to do some covering fire, or we're going to expect to take casualties as we cross this field. Um, that's just a, a part of the enemy strength that I'm quite comfortable not dealing with. We'll have to keep paying attention to the infantry guys left in here, because um, we are, I think, are more of a threat than this long-range MG. Um... We might be able to probably, and again, it depends what's on a hard flank, but maybe we could try and bring some of the carriers up to this kind of position and see if we can't get some fire beyond the hedgerows into that house, uh, which I'll probably do with this group here. Uh, but again, conscious we might get an MG inside, so we'll see how that goes. But that's the general, pl general plan. It's going to be fr main strength attack up here, small amount of effort just to try and uh, maybe neutralize or pick away at the forces that are here um, and just ignore those guys as best we can. So, uh, yeah, as ever, interested to hear your thoughts on these, and yeah. again, someone somewhere, I think it's a machine gun over there, is taking pot shots at my uh, truck, although actually it could be this guy again, now he's reversed again, he just, everywhere he goes he seems to get shot, so I'll have to find a, a bit more of a safe home for him, um, yeah, now I got distracted, as ever, I hope you guys enjoyed this, um, and I'll catch you all in the next one, cheerio!